Well, most of this project revolves around the LabVIEW application ISI and iDiagram.vi. The application allows you to generate a uh, number of pulses. These pulses pass through a channel model and the transmitted pulses can be considered individually as can be the received pulses. Now the transmitted waveform and the received wa waveform combine these pulses by superposition and those represent the actual analog waveform that would be transmitted and received. Notice that the very first bit is a true and that maps to a 1 and if we produce a second bit this is a 1 0 or true false so here we have the 1 here we have the negative 1 as we increase the length of the bitstream notice again that you can establish the correlation between the bitstream itself here we see the first few bits going back and forth here we have three falses in a row and then four trues in a row And in this way you can experiment with either a few number of pulses or uh, quite a few. Again, looking at the transmitted waveform, this is the actual analog waveform that's being transmitted through the channel. Now we have different pulse shapes available. We were just looking at the rectangular shape. This is the shape that's based on the sync function. And there's another version that's very similar to sync called the raised cosine function. And all of these pulse shapes have various uh, points of interest with respect to inter-symbol inter interference or ISI. I'm varying the channel bandwidth right now. I'm actually decreasing the channel bandwidth and you start to see that the high frequency content of the signal is reduced leading to the, the distortion and more rounded edges of the rectangle pulse. Also you can experiment by adding varying amounts of noise in the channel. This would be additive white noise that's being added. There's a option to engage an FIR or linear phase type filter for the channel model. The default is an IIR filter that introduces delay distortion. I'd also like to point out that if you find that there's not quite enough detail available on those pulses, you're certainly welcome to increase the, the symbol width although this becomes a little bit more difficult to see when using the sync and raised cosine. So a little bit smaller values for symbol width are appropriate here. Now the eye diagram in the upper right corner is something that we'll come back to later, so I'll, I'll defer comment on that one for now. I'd also like to point out that any time you need to reestablish re the initial default values, that's how you do it. And so that sends all of the front panel controls back to their default value. 